Hey game makers, Nelson here. It's time to really kick off this dev series, right? Let's just uh, dive in and start making a plugin and a corresponding uh, server side logic as well. So what we are going to work on tonight, so let's open up our project six. We are going to be working on a cloud save solution. So this is my project six for everyone who's been following along with the tutorials. I've been using project six for everything. Uh, really quick, I am just going to make a a new file in the plugins folder and we are going to call this online cloud save uh, .js .js would be helpful all right and okay so online cloud save what do I mean by online cloud save uh, so um, save so pretty much what we're trying to do is we are trying to say hey if I save over here and I want to upload this particular game to multiple devices um, I can bring over my save data to a phone to another computer to another web browser uh, pretty much anywhere that I want to because after all save data so so really quick um so we want to take data from one source and be able to load it in other on other devices yeah sure on other devices because right now um, saving is done locally so what we want to do is we want to put this into an online cloud solution using our server and our database so that way we can take it from multiple devices. Okay. So with that, uh, let's see how RPG Maker saves in general. So let's let's uh, fire this project up. Ooh, Kidoki. I was messing with some stuff, so give me a second here. Uh, alrighty, Game Maker. Sorry about that. I didn't have it updated for a while. So let's come on in here. Let's sign on in. And I just realized I won't be able to sign in because I haven't started my server yet. Alrighty. So you want to let us open up. Um, Server.js file, I believe. Yeah. The online. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to start up my server real quick. Excellent. Okay, let's try this now. Huzzah. And of course, what do we got? Oh. Window map name is under. What the heck is this? What? The what the? Uh. See, this is what happens when you play around in a uh, <laughs> in a dev environment for far too long. Okay. So All right. I think that fixed it. Hold on. Let's try this one more time. Whoo! Ah, yes. Finally. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, save just so we have an idea of what actually gets saved when you save a game. So if we come in here and we open up the folder, it creates a save folder on your local machine. Now when it's web, it saves it in cache, but for right now it's in a save folder and there's actually two files that we have to deal with. Uh, this global RPG, RPG save and this file one RPG save. Now, if we just look at them, um, and I open it up with, hold on, oh, hold on. If we look at the save file and we look at like file one, it is a bunch of gibbligook. Uh, now, full disclosure, I did look beforehand on how these are written. So these are actually base 64 encoded and compressed. So these are actually just giant 
text files almost, uh, but they're actually objects. So this global RPG save is actually what you see when you go into the initial load screen. So when you go into load and you see all the play times and who's in your party and that kind of thing, that's what this global RPG save does. Uh, this file one actually has all your game data. So all like the game map stuff, all the game system stuff. It takes that, it takes a giant snapshot of everything that you have, compresses it, uh, or puts it to base 64 encoding and then compresses it. That's pretty much what's going on here, which actually is a benefit to us because it already keeps it in a nice, simple, uh, almost like a text file. So we can take this, upload it to our server, and then our upload to our database, and then we can call it whenever we need it. So it, it's actually gonna be easy for us to do this. Okay, so that's, those are the two files that get saved. There is technically a third file uh, when you change the options, but we're not gonna worry about that one. And actually I'm thinking that we might not even worry about the global RPG save. So we're gonna, so let, let, let's talk about this. What we wanna do is, uh, I'm gonna do what's called a minimum viable product for this cloud save server. So we could do all sorts of things where we say, you know, the save files, you know, maybe we could even do like a, um, we could make a requirement for um, a max number of save files and try to try to uh, make it so that, you know, a, a player can't do more than like three save files at a time on the database and stuff like that. Um, and it's something I would highly suggest for future updates for like to do's. Um, but for our purposes, since we are just doing minimum viable product, so we just want to be able to, you know, when we, how about this? How about we do it when we load it? So when we sign in, then it's going to check the database. Database. Uh, and if we have data, if we have data, we are going to load from database. Okay. So sign in, check the database, have data, load from database. And if we don't have the data, No, new game. Okay, so really quick, here's the turn of events. So we're gonna, this is just to make it easier for us so that all we have to do is just one quick thing. Um, I don't wanna get too stuck into how to program for uh, RPG Maker MV. I'm assuming that if you're watching this series, you have a base level of knowledge of how RPG Maker works, of how JavaScript works, of how basic coding works. Um, what we're really going to be focusing on is my system and how it integrates together. So here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, when we sign into the game, it's going to check our database to see if there's a, to see if we have any data that needs to be loaded. If yes, load from the database. If no, new game. Okay. Really simple, really easy. Uh, it's just a single API call, uh, nothing too complex. Okay. So with that, this online cloud save, let's actually put this off to the right. So let's split this to the right and to the left, we're gonna keep our server stuff. So right here I have my MV online server and let's, uh, let's talk about this for a second. So should we make this an API route or a socket module? Um, I haven't come out with a video for this, but I plan on doing this soon on the differences between an API route and a socket module. Uh, I, I did cover it in my original overview of the MV system, but I think it needs a, a definite refresh because I've added a few things since then. Um, long story short, if you're debating between whether you want to do an API or a socket module, it really comes down to, do you need an open connection and how often are you using it? And they're actually interrelated. So. Socket modules are very good for things that you don't know when it's going to happen, but you want it to go to everyone all at once and you want it, the connection to stay open while you do all that uh, is a good thing for socket modules. So things like chat, things like updating X, Y position, you know, anything along those lines, you want to keep this nice and open. Um, since we're just loading one thing to the database at a time and since we're just calling this, you know, maybe once a game to say, hey, do I have any data? It's just better for us to do an API route. 
Um, it just makes more sense for this particular situation. Okay, so we're gonna make a new file. We're gonna call this um, cloudsave.js. Alrighty. So one of the things that I did include in the API routes, I did include this example.js. And the reason why I included it is so that we can just copy this on over to here. And let me explain really quick what's going on here, okay? Because there's there's a lot of stuff going on here, and, it, and if you've never seen Express before, or you you don't know how my system works, uh, this is to make everything modular. So this router, uh, so Express require Express. Uh, the auth API I'll get into in a second. The router is an Express router, and then it exports the router. So then when we go into our server.js, I actually have the example right here. Uh, you do this app use, which uses the middleware of Express to say, hey, anytime I go to, uh, you know, www.mywebsite.com, right now it's on localhost, but, you know, whatever it is, uh, port 8000 slash example, you're going to route everything to example. So within this example, I have a slash testing. So if we were on, uh, like, Nelderson Gaming, let's just say we were on Nelderson Gaming, okay? So www.neldersongaming.com port 8000 because that's the port that's the default port that we have everyone. Uh, and then if I did slash example slash testing, let me just cut this out and show you. This is where this points to. Okay, so this router get slash testing is using the slash example first because it's running through this middleware and then through this slash testing. So Nelderson Gaming example testing would run this. Okay, if I was running it off Nelderson Gaming. Right now we're running it, everything off localhost so it's more for us right this second, this. Okay, but th that's how this whole router thing works and why I use it. It's so that we can make uh, you can technically make this example, you know, blah, and then this becomes, instead of example, it becomes blah. Okay? Uh, it's just, it's just to make life, you know, it's just to make everything more modular. So that way, if you're creating, if you're creating some sort of API route, kind of like we are today, you can, it, it doesn't matter exactly what you name it you can use the middleware to to make it work within your own system. Fair enough? That's a little confusing, it's okay. <laughs> um, just know that this is the easy, easiest, easiest way to do this. Uh, let's just put that back. Okay. So we have example.js, we have cloudsave.js. Okay, so let's get rid of example.js for a second. Uh, don't save. Okay, so that was the router. So express require express. Um, router, we already talked about the router. So let's talk about this authenticate, uh, authenticate API. So um, I talked about with my security system, I talked about how we, when you sign in, you are given a token. Okay, and you have a choice of either keeping this or getting rid of it. If you keep it, it needs to have a valid token for all upcoming routes. So pretty much what this means is um, every single time that you try to access the exam, you know, before it was example slash testing, you would need to be signed in. Okay. Uh, reasons why you wouldn't need to be signed in, you know, things like websites or, uh, well, even websites, I mean, you can have it locked down through the API, but let's say you had... I don't know, uh, things that just didn't need to be, like just data that didn't need to be encrypted in any way, shape, or form. Um, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head, but I mean, let's say, you know, you had a leaderboard and you just wanted the top 10 players on the leaderboard. You know, you don't necessarily have to be signed in to see that. So you can just hand it out. So, you know, slash top 10 and it just gives you the top 10 uh, leaders on that leaderboard or something to that effect. So th that's something where you wouldn't need this this router use the auth API. So this is requiring authenticate.js, authenticate api.js, which you can look at over here. It pretty much just checks the uh, the header 
for the x-axis token parameter and then just kind of verifies the the jot or the javascript web token that you get that you then pass from your client okay so that's all that's going on there um you don't really have to get into it all that you have to know is that this far auth api with this is just forcing them to be logged in that's all that this is doing so you can either have it or not have it for our purposes cloud save you want you want people to be signed in in order to use it, so that way you can find them later on uh, when you need to.